Okay. So this, um, today I'm gonna to be talking a little bit about our one plus two plus one program. It's kind of a unique program in which you earn an associate degree in nursing and a bachelor's of degree in nursing kind of at the same time. So um, it, has the, it has a lot of benefits that we'll kind of talk about, not just financial, but a little bit more freedom that senior year. And once again, once we break it down, you'll kind of see what I'm talking about. Program specific. So in order to apply to the program, the first thing you need to do is apply to the university. You need to get accepted into UMW. Then you also have to indicate an interest on your application that you're interested in nursing. And at that time, your application will be screened to enter in our program. So we have another secondary screening process to be part of the one plus two plus one program. They're actually not that bad. Um, the things we look for is that we look for a B in um, high school algebra, biology, and chemistry. And on your SATs, we're looking for a 520 in math and a 520 in reading. Now, in the event you have not had to take um, or you've not been able to take your SATs, I know that COVID has really impacted people um, being able to do that, or that your grades um, perhaps weren't exactly a B, like for example, you took honors biology your ninth grade year and you got a C. Um, I really invite you still to apply to the program, kind of discuss why that happened. And also your admission, your um, admission rep that's assigned to you can also talk about um, different ways you might qualify for the program. If you wanna be here, we want you here. That's pretty much, um, and we try and look at our students holistically. You know, they're a whole person. Program specifics, your first year, you'll be taking classes at UMW and at Germana. Um, and then you apply for the nursing program at Germana um, in February. And I walk you through that entire process. What your first year looks like is, you will be in an FSEM and that FSEM is a nursing FSEM. Nobody's in that FSEM, but one plus two plus one students. Uh, you'll take medical terminology, um, which is a class we offer to kind of just help you learn our language. Um, we have um, our psych department does an amazing job um, teaching developmental psychology. And then at Germana, you'll take anatomy and physiology and then of course the SDV course, which is like a student development course. And you can do that over the weekend. It's really like a fast course. In spring, you'll take a humanities of your choice, um, English 202, and then biology, um, bio 142, which is anatomy and physiology two and microbiology. Now, some of you have probably done dual enrollment classes. In the event you do dual enrollment classes, there's other classes you can take. We would like, for example, if you did English 111 and English 112, which is kind of popular in, in Virginia, you wouldn't take English 202. We, you know, cause you already have credits to count towards that. So we will substitute another class in. Years two and three, um, students live on the UMW campus, participate in activities, athletics, and dining. Um, students primarily attend Germana's nursing program, and then they take one course at least at UMW to maintain student status. Um, this is a picture of Amanda Morrissey. Amanda Morrissey right now is a sophomore in our program and she obviously runs cross country track. And um, this is Nicole. Nicole is part of a service organization on campus and she's also a CNA. So she works um, over the summer, every summer and breaks as a CNA. 
which is a certified nurse's aide. I forgot to say that. Now, the summer after your junior year, you can sit for the boards and you take an exam called the NCLEX, and that's our licensing exam. So then that gives you a lot of opportunities for your senior year. You can remain on campus, participate in campus life and be a full-time student. So this is Bella and Bella um, is doing that. She plays field hockey. Um, I had two students decide to study abroad and they completed their final year, their BSN. So this is them in Peru at Machu Picchu and they both decided they actually worked at a clinic to develop um, and helped provide care to um, a pediatric and women's health clinic. It was an amazing experience for them. Now, some students decide I want to get Kraken, and this would be Jordan, and Jordan works on a trauma step-down unit, and she works full-time as a nurse and then finishes her BSN. So you have a lot of options that senior year. Um, I'm just going to be a little biased and say that, you know, you have a lot, the rest of your life to work. Um, probably consider, I really do recommend considering that you study abroad. Um, it's a really great opportunity and UMW has an amazing program, like, you know, the center, oh, I can't even remember what it's called off the top of my head, but it's the center that actually- the Center for International Education. Thank you, Center for International Education. They um, have a really um, dedicated and animated group of individuals that can really help support you find the right fit. Um, they're just wonderful. So definitely consider something like that. So let's talk a little bit about tuition. UMW is your financial aid home. Now, the benefit of this program is it is affordable. Um, the cost of tuition is calculated per credit hour. So any courses you take at Germana are at Germana's um, per credit tuition rates. If you need to take a summer course, let's say you um, need to take psychology or sociology um, and you had like a lighter load um, and you wanted to kind of have a lighter load, then during the school year, you can take the course at UMW or your local community college. It just really depends on whether you're going to be taking the class in person or online. So when I, tuition, this would be a great example, tuition, regular tuition at UMW would be on your left. Um, we have a little bit of a reduction your first year, but since you're stay, still taking a lot of classes, um, it's not as significant, but your sophomore and junior year, we see about a 45 to 50% drop in tuition, um, which is just huge. Now, please note, you do need to live on campus the first two years. That is required. Um, and then you have different options, your junior and then of course senior year, you, you probably can do whatever you want. Um, now I will tell you this, nursing licensure programs in the state of Virginia, we are blessed that we have a, just a great set of programs. Um, it, but it's competitive to get in. At UMW, anywhere from 300 to 400 students indicate an interest in pre-nursing every fall. And um, we usually offer admission to about 100, 90 to about 100 students. And then we accept the first 20 students to deposit. So the first 20 students to indicate an interest, um, pay their deposit and commit, um, we take them. And anybody who comes after that is waitlisted. Um, I want to kind of preface this statement a little bit in the idea that all nursing programs in the state of Virginia have hundreds and hundreds of more applications than they do seats. 
Um, and so the really the difference is with us is that we just kind of narrow things down in the beginning. Now, students are responsible for their own transportation. You are exempted from the auto registration for first year students. To be honest with you, our students usually carpool. Um, so it's really not as big of a deal, but it you do need to have your own transportation. So kind of highlighting kind of what I discussed earlier, is UMW a direct admit school? Really? No. But an accurate answer is yes. If you do your part, you will get into Gervana's nursing program. And what does do your part mean? Um, stay out of trouble. No, you can't have any type of felony convictions. You can't get a DUI. You just don't have a lot of flexibility because um, you have to have a clean background check to get into healthcare facilities. Um, and that's just non-negotiable. Um, the other thing is that you have to maintain your GPA. If you have A's and B's, you know, we've had 100% of our students get in the last three years. But they did their part. They stayed out of trouble, maintained their GPAs um, in A's and B range. Okay. Our students, um, we might be a little different. Um, I like to think that uh, we, um, as far as our size and some of the, the kind of the way the program's structured, but our students have opportunities the same as everybody. They've gone to probably every graduate program um, in the geographic region. And now we're actually, we ha actually just wrote a letter of recommendation for somebody in Michigan. Um, our students study abroad. Our students are employed by every major health system in the region, and um, they do internships at NIH, Walter Reed, Children's Hospital, I mean, anywhere that's hiring. Um, this would be applicable to those who are um, probably applying, if there's anybody on the phone call or on the Zoom, Next year, uh, early decision is November 1st, early action is November 15th, and regular decision is February 1st. But I still do invite you to apply um, for this year. Um, you just never know what our numbers look like. And if you have any questions, I always recommend you start off with your admissions counselor. Your admission counselor kind of knows you and knows the process a trillion times better than we do or I do. Um, and, but if you have any other type of questions, if you've taken a lot of credit as far as dual enrollment, you were part of um, the governor's program where you earn an associate's degree um, and you wanna reach out to me, please do, um, bsmprogram at umw.edu. Then I'm gonna open it up to questions. Um, I know that was really, really, really fast, but I'd like to open it up to questions and I'm readily available. And you can ask it in the chat or you can, um, or you can just ask me in person. Nobody has any question, Lindsay, Jessica, Tony. You guys all pretty comfortable with the information? Ah, no, good question. Do the students typically travel to Germana five days a week? No, not even close, <laughs> not even close. So usually what we do, particularly that first year, um, students, we have our FSEM, which is one of the classes you're taking. And then um, the, uh, the developmental psychology class we usually offer on Tuesday and Thursday. And then students take their anatomy class usually Monday and Wednesday. So they're kind of off days. Now, once they start in the nursing program, there's usually a day of clinicals. And that day of clinicals can be any day of the week. That's the truth. Um, because we are kind of at the mercy, like every nursing program of clinical site placement. So that includes weekends. I mean, you know, we they usually try and shy away from 12 hour shifts 
but you know, you do a variety of shifts and it can be any time. Now the other, um, yeah, uh, I saw that, let me see, hold on. Now the other day of the week, you'll be at Germana, probably about one day a week. And that's for lecture, um, also for lab time. Now, if you wanna do additional lab time, you might go out there, you know, an extra, like for example, you're practicing your health assessment. As to the four year, let me look. During the fourth years, um, if a student decides to work at the same time, I, I don't, is there more question part? Oh, there we go. No, they do not need to stay local. Not at all. As a matter of fact, I recommend that if a student decides their senior year to work, um, because you have to work full time, they, they aren't going to hire a new grad part time. They're just not. Um, <clears throat> they require a lot of onboarding and training. So then I say that senior year, if when my students decide they want to move back home and get working, um, or they, they want to get working, I tell them to move back home. It's just, it's honestly setting them up for success. It's, it's definitely doable. The majority of our students um, are successful going full-time and working full-time, but they're living at home. That means, you know, when you work a night shift, literally your only focus is getting through nursing or getting through that final year. And then also um, onboarding to the new job. Now I did say sometimes, and this is one thing that did happen um, with one of my students is, um, or and actually two of my students, because their employer would have offered to pay. So once they were employed for six months, their employer paid for their entire BSN. I had a student, two students take a semester off in order to have their employer paid. And it wasn't a big deal. They just took a semester off. They worked, they got adjusted, and then um, their uh, employer picked up the bill for their BSN. In this area, um, tuition reimbursement can be as high as $15,000 for your BSN. Um, that's at Mary Washington Healthcare um, and is usually about most hospitals do at least $5,000 a year annually, so calendar year. Yeah, actually, I could probably send it to you. Um, I don't know if we have one posted, um, but we do have a sample curriculum. And actually, what will happen is you'll come in, or as students come in, they will um, get a, well, they'll have a universal degree map. But after you um, kind of have a chance to uh, look at your transcripts, get all your AP credit in there, um, any dual enrollment, any CLEP exams. I mean, just any IB stuff, just any example like that. Then we individualize the degree map, but we do have a generic degree map. Um, and sometimes people come to our program and don't take, don't have a lot of credit um, and that's okay. We still have plan, you know, we have, we have um, way for that to happen for people to complete their degree. As a matter of fact, the financials that I kind of posted were if you didn't come in with any credit. If you've come in with a lot of AP um, or dual enrollment credit, your cost of tuition will be lower because you don't have any those, you don't have to take um, certain classes. Does anybody have any other questions? Lindsay, Jessica, I know Amanda and Adeloa don't, but. I will say just um, kind of from the admission side um, and Dr. Dugan kind of touched on this a little bit, but um, if you do think you are interested in the nursing program, um, it is strongly advised that you apply either early decision or early action um, because 
while the program is kind of unpredictable every year, sometimes, you know, we don't get 20 students until March. The last two years, um, last year we were full um, in the nursing program by what, the first week of February. And then this year we were actually full like the second week of January. Um, so if you are strongly considering this program, um, I strongly encourage you to get that application in as soon as you can um, so that we can get you a decision and then you, you know, have as much time as, you know, we can give you to make that deposit before the program fills up. Are SATs or SE or ACT required? Well, <clears throat> that actually depends, Jessica. If you um, couldn't access your ACT, or your SAT, like you couldn't take the SAT, um, then they can actually go by your high school GPA. There's a way to have those um, credits waived. I do believe the high school GPA is 3.5. Is that true, Amanda? Yes. So um, for this year, we obviously, you know, see a lot of students who aren't able to take the SAT or, you know, there are problems with the SAT, even students who didn't score as well on the SAT just because, you know, you're you're taking it under mm -hmm. abnormal circumstances, which is totally understandable. Um, and so we did put kind of a um, caveat in place that we would waive those SAT or ACT scores if you had a high, high school GPA of a 3.5 or higher. Now, if you don't have that 3.5 and you know you tried to sign up for the SAT three times and it kept being canceled, come talk to us. Um, you know We have policies in place to guide our decision making and things like that, but I'm never going to tell a student not to apply to the program just because of things that are completely out of their control. You know, and I'll, and I'll just reiterate this, you know, I think probably where we're different from or where we had the luxury of being different because we're a small school, we really want you, I wouldn't, if you want to be here, we want you here too. That's it, honestly. So um, I'm less interested in 4.0. I mean, I do like a 4.0, come on, but I mean, but I'm less interested in this student that perhaps has a straight 4.0 perfect SATs, but really is not interested in being a nurse or not interested in at UMW, truly. Um, you know, give me somebody who wants to be here because that's the type of person that's gonna excel in our program. Now, do we have any other questions? Did I miss anything? Because we have time and you're more than welcome. Like I said, um, I'm here. Amanda, can you think of anything I might have missed? I think you covered most of the things um, that I, you know, that we normally get questions about. Um, I always just emphasize kind of the value of our program and, you know, the fact that you're going to come out with three different credentials, um, plus typically work experience as well. Um, and our students do not struggle to find placements afterwards. Um, and in fact, many of them are placed during that senior year. And so um, it makes them very competitive. And we definitely have a nursing shortage. And um, our students are uh, highly sought after. HCA, I mean, so really, you know, the challenge is for you to kind of find that hospital and that unit that's the right fit for you. Um, it's really not as much about finding employment. You definitely can do that. Right. Not. I even... also always like to point out that. Um, you know, I think people sometimes can be a little bit hesitant because our program looks so different from other programs. Um, but it, it really is in a lot of ways that are beneficial. And like, like you said, while technically we're not a direct admit program, um, 
it, it really is as long as you are committed to the process and committed to the program um you don't have to worry about getting to your sophomore or junior year and finding out that you weren't admitted to the nursing program um i, I think you would probably agree that in the very 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 rare instance that a student wouldn't be admitted to the germana program they're well aware that you know they are not meeting um those recommendations well before they get kind of that notice well and and there've only been it's it's really the only time we've had students um not be accepted were um, they got to see an anatomy and and you're not going to get into any program in the state of Virginia. And I say any quality program in the state of Virginia, if you have a C in anatomy, um, it's just that kind of a baseline course. And then you have the options you can apply the following semester, but um, it's it's once again. And and the last three years. It hasn't been a problem at all. I've had a really, really good group. I mean, I have to admit, I'm a little biased, but my groups, my students are rock star. Are there resources for students that do struggle? Actually, there are on campus. Um, we have a writing uh, free peer to peer tutoring um, as far as writing. Um, at Germana, they actually have two things. So they have a tutor that does anatomy and physiology, and then they actually hire a nurse um, and uh, a baccalaureate prepared nurse who, uh, two actually two nurses that do tutor the nursing subjects as well. At, at no cost. I should say that part prior to, yeah, at no cost. I always tell students too, especially at Mary Washington, um, it is hard for you to fall through the cracks. You actually have to try to fall through the cracks because especially that first year with the way that the first year seminar is set up, we try and put as many things in place and as many people on your radar as we possibly can. Um, we know that that first year and that first semester are a struggle for a lot of students. I would say probably the vast majority of students um, because it is an adjustment. You're away from home. You have to figure out you know, new friends and all those kinds of things while taking classes. So we put so many things in place for you um, that it really kind of is a struggle to fall through the cracks. You probably actually have to try. Well, and once again, I always do like to say that, you know, nursing is not, um, well, this is a good question here. Do the nursing students um, ever feel a little set apart because they're off campus? Uh, no, not that I know of. I mean, we have students, three students that are on the soccer team. Um, one of which is a captain of the soccer team. So she's really involved. Other students um, are engaged in the campus community, either through core, so that community engagement element. Um, we have a service. It's not a sorority. It's like a service organization. A lot of it's called a service fraternity. Um, is yeah, it, but it's not a it's not a social Greek organization. It is a very service driven organization. Yeah, it's service. So I actually have two students that do that. Um, so I think that engage now. Do nursing students spend a lot of time studying? They do. I mean, they're busy. They're in clinicals one day a week they're in lecture the other day and they're studying a lot um so i'm not going to say that they're not um probably different maybe a little different because they just have a different set of responsibilities um, that's nursing but um many of my students participate in campus activities um, because we encourage them. We, nursing school can be a bit of a fishbowl, you know, so we really want them to have other outlets and other interests because that's what makes UMW, you know, UMW, right? All these kind of neat opportunities. Um, and there are a trillion clubs. I mean, holy cow. Um, one other popular thing, and I'll just probably lightly touch on this, is the Global Medical Brigade. 
um, sometimes those students in non-COVID land um, have opportunities to do mission work. And um, from a healthcare standpoint, that is really, really a great opportunity too. Uh, most, most students have found it very fulfilling. I will say as well, the first year nursing students are usually pretty popular because they're one of the only groups that are allowed to have vehicles on campus. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> but nobody wants to give up their parking space. No. Nobody wants to give up their parking space. So they do walk a lot anyways. Because <laughs> once you get a good parking space, you definitely don't want to give it up. Well, I don't know if we have any other questions or um, when it looks like we've got some people starting to join for the 1230 session. Um, and so Jessica and Lindsay, if there's another session that you were interested in jumping in on, um, I would say you can probably go do that now. Okay. All right. And we'll just give it a couple more minutes for everybody to chime in and, and we'll kind of get started. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Amanda, just let me know when you'd like to get like me to get started. Okay, um, I think we'll probably give it another minute or two just because it's 1230 now. So um, I just want to make sure anybody who wants to join has the opportunity to do that. Okay. Oh, and it looks like we lost the one student we had. <laughs> um, so we can just hang out and see if anybody else joins. I think I got an email right before CCNE accreditation from Mrs. Dixon. So um, we'll see if I can get her the information she uh, requested. Okay. Now, when are destination days, Amanda? Um, so I think this is what Elena was referencing when she emailed. Um, we, instead of doing destination, we're doing an admitted student celebration. Um, and so I believe that kicks off, we're going to do two different kind of weeks of it. 
um, where there is going to be kind of a, you know, welcome on Sunday night and then every evening throughout the week, there are going to be different sessions that they can attend. Um, Am I scheduled for that? Uh, I think I, I usually do. Um, I usually do something. I can check the schedule. I feel like I feel like I might be. I don't know. I don't know. Diane has sent out so many things at this point. I am like, I can't keep them all straight. I have them all written down, and I just of course. Whenever she tells me to show up is when I show up. <laughs> I know, right? Like she, she like it was the middle of CC and and she's like, can I? And I'm like, I said, oh my god, I'm so sorry. And she's like, can I just register you? I go, please, I'm sorry. <laughs> just put right. me, put me on whatever. Like I just, just tell me where I need to be when I need to be there. All right. And actually I need to talk to Melissa um, to set up um, the evening events for, for the one plus two plus one students. Um, those are usually really well attended and it kind of gives us a chance to answer their questions in a forum that's a little bit more, uh, you know, we have more time. Right, right. So hopefully, um, and I'll do that. I, I just haven't, literally CCNE was CCNE and it's over now, so yay. But it sucked the energy out of me. I don't see you on this schedule. I'm wondering if you're not on here because you guys already do those nursing chats pretty regularly anyways. I think so. And you know what, usually for destination day, um, you know, when they, we do the breakfast for the honor students, right. I do the hi, everybody. First. But we also and then do informational just because right. there's a lot of moving parts. And I felt like when I'm more present, they, um, it seems like parents and, well, students usually aren't too bad, but parents have a little less anxiety. You know, it's just, right. it's well, a lot. I think, I think too, with this program, they're really gearing it towards kids who don't know what they want to study and your kids already know what, yeah. what they're doing. So our retention this year was very good. I, mean, I think I and well and I, I have a feeling this is what contributed to the program filling so fast um I think this past year has really highlighted just how badly we need nurses and good nurses and uh I think people are kind of seeing that as a really secure uh career field that oh it's secure yeah definitely yeah <laughs> yeah I don't well I was I was really excited with Alana I mean, mm -hmm. I hope, I hope she still likes it, you know, cause she'll be in my F sim. <laughs> right. I hope she's, she, she isn't like, oh, I hate nursing now. <laughs> I'll be so sad. I'll be like, oh, okay. Um, well, honestly, I think she'll be okay. You know, she obviously has a very, um, I think comprehensive and realistic view of what nursing school and nursing looks like um she does and you know what she knows Dr. McCullough mm -hmm. she uh you know all my friends a lot of my friends are nurses I mean nurses are nurses and you know a lot of people who mentor her are nurses mm -hmm. and they just you know I mean literally when she said she was going to go into nursing it was like this yay yeah, yeah everybody everybody <laughs> and, and you know so I sometimes I kind of feel like oh god but yeah she's encouraged and something else so I'm looking forward to it so we'll see if she what one of those things we've already done her FAFSA we've done everything I think awesome um, so you know yeah uh, and then obviously let me know so like I said um net ID should start going out today so she should have access to her net ID and email um and then the next thing after that she would get is the first year questionnaire um so obviously for her, a lot of that is already decided because they don't have a ton of choice in uh, their first semester with your program. 
Uh, mm -hmm. No, they don't have any choice. The second semester they do, but you know what? They don't really like it that much that having the choice because right. they're like they register themselves. <laughs> yeah, they, they're like. Why do I have to find a humanities? I'm like, yeah, you need to find a humanities. Oh, can't you just register me? I'm like, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so, um, but she'll get that first year questionnaire and then housing and dining agreement, um, registering orientation. And that's, about, that's it. She just, as she gets those emails, as long as she just does the things when she gets her emails, she should be good. Oh, we'll cross our fingers. Yep. You know, we'll cross. I already talked to, um, and actually now, so this actually gives me a sense of a little bit of urgency because if the students are getting their net ID and starting to get those emails, I probably should set up the evening events for the one plus two plus one, mm -hmm. um, you know, admitted student. I, that's what I'll, I'll call it. I'll call it admitted student events. Um, because that way I can kind of tell them, okay, you can apply to Germana now, you know, those who are on dual enrollment, what they need to do, that kind of stuff. So, um, kind of go through that process. Do we have a lot of people from Fairfax, your region? Um, I'm not sure. They don't send us the list of kids who have been admitted. Obviously we always have a couple. I know, uh, I think at least two that are from Fairfax. Um, one is really awesome. She's, or, you know, obviously one is Elena, but um, I have another one that's really awesome. Who's really, really excited about the program. I've talked to her and her mother several times and um, she's very, very good and very excited about it. So. Oh, I'm glad I said, I hope, um, I, you know, I don't know why, you know, I, I spoke about the program before at the high schools, like, mm -hmm. and not last year, obviously, but the year before. Um, but it's just getting the word out is very hard, you know? Um, well, and I think, too, sometimes it's difficult um, because it looks so different. You know, we start talking about how it's split between two schools and, you know, you do your associates and then your RN and then your BSN. And I think some of them get a little bit overwhelmed um, before they really understand like, okay, this is, I'm going to be doing the same thing as another nursing program, but there are just less hoops for me to jump through, you know. There it is. And I always say that senior year to me, I mean, that's what I told them when I said that senior year, every summer she can study abroad because it's more affordable. Yep. I told her, I told her every summer you should study abroad. Yep. Every summer. And I said, and it shouldn't be necessarily nursing related. You should do something at UMW every single summer. Absolutely. Um, you know, and, and that's, she's actually really interested in that. So that's I, when I have, when I talk to students and a lot of this comes from my own experience, but also just what I've seen happen with students in general, um, I think that study abroad experience is one of those things that is just so valuable and something that you can't replicate in any other way. Um, yeah, I agree. And in our, in, in the Center for International Education, you know, um, Jose, he's so vested, you know. Yeah. He really, I mean, him, him and his team and his support staff are amazing they really 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 are um and i understand there's financial considerations but i just like i said it was so well if you major in nursing we we can do it yep well and i i don't think a lot of students realize that um you know obviously studying abroad there are some associated costs with it but a lot of it is things that you're already paying for in your tuition like if you're not here for a semester you're paying tuition to the school that you're at and not to us so these are already costs that you have your financial aid can go to help with it um it's just and sometimes they have grants and i know we were lucky um so last year or last fall um just speaking about the COVID thing we had a donor who was originally going to give us a thousand dollars and um you know I I responded back you know and I wanted to go to a student who might not be able to attend continue their education 
if it wasn't for the fact that they, um, if, if without additional help. Mm -hmm. So um, I told them about one student, I said, I actually have another. And they ended up giving us $5,000. Wow. Yeah, it was awesome. huge. It really was awesome. And I thank them, I, you know, because the first thing I said, oh, this makes me, this makes me so happy. This makes my heart happy. I said, mm -hmm. thank you so much. I said, you're making a difference. I said, you know, and, and they were just so happy to do it. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, there are opportunities like that when you study abroad as well, um, that this would just be, you know, I, this money came out of nowhere, mm -hmm. literally. I didn't, you know, and I said, oh, thank you. <laughs> this yeah, right. so happy, um, you know. Well, and for the nursing program, particularly, I know for us, we're, we're always, you know, trying to wiggle things around as much as we can, because as long as we can get them through that first year, um, you know, the costs go down from there and, you know, they're able, once they finish that third year, they can start working and defray costs that way. And so really just trying to piece as many things together as we can to get them through that first year. Well, and, and you know what, that first year is still least, I, you know what it is, I know a lot of people, it's a real, they don't want to live on campus the first two years, but I'm going to tell you, when students don't live on campus, they don't do well. They don't do well. I mean, they really, they don't, they don't, they don't bond with their peers. No, they, they don't, don't integrate well. And it's yeah, just so important. In this program, it's absolutely critical to success. You know, I even noticed a difference with the students who stayed home, you know, because we offered them to stay right. home last fall and the ones that are, and they're having a hard time. It's well, just because I think that's why, right? Like even with graduate programs, we see so many that are cohort modeled because it really does improve the quality of the education. Um, you know, when you are with the same people and you can have continuing discussions and, you know, really build a, a base of knowledge and learn to work as part of a team. Um, it's vital and have that support system. Um, oh, yes. You know, what they're doing is hard and, you know, you need that community around you if you're going to do it. And, and they honestly, I mean, I found, I just, you know, and I, I the first year, like I said, I felt we kind of let it go. And then, um, and, and we kind of, it was a little hit or miss, but the second year I really noticed the students that live on campus just, just, they, they just faded, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I couldn't engage them as easily. And the same thing happened. Um, I noticed this year too, same thing. So I was like, there's, I've only been re, it's only been reaffirmed that this was the right decision. Right. And, and so I know it's a deterrent. I know like it's a deterrent. Right. I, I, even speaking from my own experience, I went to a school where you were required to live on campus for all four years. You actually had to apply to live off campus. Um, really? But it, I, you know, it was also, so I went to school in a very small town. Um, there wasn't a lot of housing off campus available anyways. Mm -hmm. um, and so, but I really do think that living on campus all four years with my peers, um, I don't know if I would have been able to finish without that, um, being in that environment. I know my son goes to tech, but he's in the <clears throat> core cadets. Mm. So he had to live, you know, his scholarship is dependent on him being on, you know, him being in right, that. Right, right. Um, and, and in a lot of ways, he's like, it's just nice because you don't have to worry about it. Like mm -hmm. when all your other, you know, all these other people are worried, are they live on campus? What do they have to do? They have to hustle, they have to jump. They have to, he goes, we move in and we move out. <laughs> yep, <laughs> you know, yep. I don't have to worry about furniture. Now his, he's doing a fifth year and um, his fifth year, he gets to live off campus, but he's like, oh, you know whatever. I'm not worried about it. I was like, I okay, never fine. wanted to, like I said, where I went to school, you had to live on campus for all four years. You could apply to live off campus for your senior year. And they, mm -hmm. there was, I believe a hundred men, a hundred senior men and a hundred senior women that they let live off campus. Um, and I never had any desire to, um, 
my husband well, it's kind of a hassle because you have to buy a bed i mean you have to buy furniture it's it's they're gross the houses mm -hmm. that are off campus are gross um yeah. my husband chose to live off campus senior year and that place was nasty yeah i know i lived in an apartment with three of my best friends so right i know it's it's yeah i know i know now a lot of our students um junior year as soon as junior year hits they move off yep yep i think that's pretty typical yeah and then senior year i don't know right now i'd probably still say about 80% of our students, no, probably more, 90% of our students start working. Yeah. They don't need, I don't know why I tell them you have the rest of your life to work, but, and a lot of them don't even have financial constraints. They just, I think a lot of it is parental pressure, honestly. Um, I think parents are really scared about their kids being able to find work. Um, and I think that's why we're seeing some of these trends where a lot of like it, like the government, there's government pressure, there's parental pressure, and they're convincing these kids that they have to go into programs that are, you know, direct pipelines into careers. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm actually seeing it be kind of detrimental. Um, like, you know, I, I'll use my brother as an example. He went and he has, he has a bachelor's degree in safety management. Um, mm -hmm. So basically, you know, work, workplace safety. Um, but it leaves it's very limiting um for him to get a job if he can't find one in his direct career field because you know every the classic thing right everybody wants to know well what are you going to do with an English degree well yeah. what aren't you going to do with an English degree like right. you know you can stick an English degree in front of so many employers and they're not even going to bat an eye. But if you have something that's very, very specific and very tracked, mm -hmm. you know, you kind no, of it's that true. Back. Now I got to tell you though. So I'm, I'm of the, um, my parents are immigrants. Mm -hmm. So that definitely, um, changes your perspective. Oh, absolutely. And so <clears throat> Elena, I said, Elena, yeah, I don't care if you don't want to major in something, but if you're not sure, you can go to community college. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. I, would, I was like, I was like, because we just, you know, I would encourage so many students. I my my other brother is actually a great example of that. He went to a four year college. He was not mm -hmm. ready. He didn't even complete a semester. Uh, yep took a couple years off to work and now he is doing his associate's degree at a community college and thriving. And thriving. I know. Thriving. See, I went to because school after ready. after six years in the Navy. So I I was I was that type of student. I was just really immature. Not ready. Um, but uh, the environment that he was coming from told him that he had to go to a four year school. And everyone mm -hmm. knew he was not ready to be there. I well, the reason why Elena had to do yes, it absolutely, was, Adiola. Thank you so much. Oh, hi, sorry, hun. Yeah, no, Brian, um, Elena, I was like, um, this year, I said, okay, we'll take your college courses. And if you get A's and B's, I will send you to UMW without, you know. Yep. And she, she's done it. I mean, her, her dual enrollment classes, I wasn't as worried about her, her high school, but I was worried, you know, mm -hmm. the dual enrollment classes. Right. A's and B's. I said, okay, that's fine. Perfect. I That's actually okay. find that a lot of those kids thrive in those dual enrollment classes, whereas um, they might not have they taken the AP or IB equivalent of it, um, because I think these high schools get it in their head that college is way harder than it is, and that they need to like totally beat these kids to a pulp in order to prepare them for college. And then you get to college and you're like, wait, what? <laughs> like my professor doesn't care? <laughs> like. If I know. And I, I, it's funny because I said the same thing. I said, you know, the thing about AP is you have to, you take this really hard class, but if you don't score a certain score on the test, it's like, I said, whereas if you do dual enrollment, no matter what, now to your, to your disadvantage, you know, if you fail it, it kind of sucks, but right. that could happen with AP. I mm -hmm. said, you know, you get the credit, you get the credit. She's actually thinking because all the classes were online and she's not a big fan of that. She's thinking about actually taking some of them over again. 
Um, yeah, no, she got a B. I told her in anatomy. I said, mm, you're fine. But she's yeah. like, mom, I didn't learn anything. It was really, it was, it was a, a class. Too. Um, was I, nice? I actually, when I was in high school, which feels like a million years ago now, um, I ended up taking the AP classes, but didn't <laughs> take the tests because I didn't necessarily want the credit for it. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to use it as preparation. And so then for like calculus, I retook calculus my first semester of college. And thank God I did, because if they would have placed me into Calc 3, I would have drowned. Um, right. And I think it just, if, and I know with Elena, I told her, I said, okay, well, why don't we just see how you feel, you know, afterwards. I yeah, said, absolutely. You know, I said, in your case, I said, you, you can, I had you take bio 141 and 142. Those are required classes. Mm -hmm. um, if you are okay with the B, great. If you're not okay with the B, just don't get worse. <laughs> like, don't take it. Don't take it. At high school. I, I told her it's fine. Well, you know? do you know how many people have cared what my GPA was in college? I know. No one. Right. Nobody cares. I know, you know, the only thing I worry about is that February and, and truly the only students who have not got into the nursing program at Germana mm -hmm. got C's in anatomy. One was a DUI, one got a DUI. Well, and, and like I said before, those are, those are not surprises. Those kids know it's coming. Yeah, they know it's coming. They know. And you know what? They're, they're sometimes, I think in the beginning of the program, um, I, I didn't make it as clear as I do now that, you know, listen, you just have to get a B. I mean, it's just, this is, and you know what? They have let people, they did let um, one student in um, who got a C, but you know what? That student ended up reading P in the course. They just don't do as well and they know it. And, and we all know it. So I'm always kind of like, just, just get an A and B, just trust me. And, and they're all capable. These students that come in are, I mean, this last group that we brought in this last fall, yeah, they were really smart. I mean, really, really smart. They're capable. But well, I think at this point we can yeah. call it. <laughs> you are correct. Um, so, um, hopefully, Oh, go ahead. What were you going to say? No, I was just going to say thanks for joining us again. Um, I know this oh. is time of year for you, so we very much appreciate it. Well, no, I, you know, like I said, if you can tell people, um, I definitely want people to join the program with their eyes open. Nothing's worse than being surprised when it's not quite what you expected. Mm -hmm. So, and I feel like most parents, since we started doing a lot more targeted informational meetings and that kind mm -hmm. of stuff, are so much better. They're so much better. There's less of a shock. Right. Um, so, and that's what we're, that's what we're always aiming for. So you're welcome. I will see you. I don't know when the next one is, but I do know it is. I'm sure Diane will send me an email. Yep. Um, I think like April, April something. Gosh, isn't that crazy? We had, we wait until April, even though I guess at this point, why not? Yeah. Well, I mean, we've got the destination thing, the like admitted student celebration at the end of February and then in March and then another open house in April. Okay. So I'll need to do an admitted student event for nursing and then okay. I'll just do several of those and just get everybody who attended. Um, and I'll talk to Melissa about that. Ugh. All right. Oh gosh. Okay. Talk to you later. Yep. Have absolutely. Thank you Bye. so much. Um, oh.